Hello and welcome back everybody to Clanot. So, we're in the cafeteria together with Fuko, Nagisa and everybody's favorite punch bag Sun Nohara. And we're planning to make some kind of artsy hat collection thingy. Probably no collection because we're trying to give them out to people. But anyway, me not English, me not very smart overall. And yeah, apparently we're taking a short break. So let's see what happens next. Other members seem tired as they drink their juices in silence. Ugh, I wonder what we're going to do. Furukawa seems to be murmuring something, but let's just ignore her for now. I don't... I don't know since when, but Fuku has lost interest in her juice and is playing around with a starfish on the table. She's poking at Santa for some reason. Oh dear, she's tripping to her fantasy land again. Of course it's time for a prank. Well, gotta do something to quote unquote warn her. So, what are we supposed to do, a wise walkthrough? Switch what she's holding. Switch, switch the carving she's holding. Well, to be fair, in this case I could have even guessed that. <laughs> Although she's embracing, or rather poking on it, fine, whatever. Hey, Sunohara. I call out to Sunohara, who's off at a distance, drinking juice by himself. Huh? Say, can you put your head on the table for a while? That is a good question. Please. Only someone handsome like you can help me. Ah, uh, oh well. Well, I, I think at this point I kind of got accustomed to this humor. Again, quote, unquote humor. Sunohara has got to be the most gullible person on earth, or the worst Aww. written one, either or. It's 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 you to this it's up to you to decide. After getting in between Fuku and Furukawa, Sunohara puts his head on the table and turns his face to the side. Yep, yep, try not to move. Like handling the needle of a record player, I slowly pick Fuku's finger up from the starfish and move it onto Sunohara's cheek. Fuku's coming back to reality. Keep going. Poke as much as you want. Fuku's screaming at the top of her lungs. Longs. Today, I mean really no English. A winner is you. Did you know that this is a reference? I didn't even know that A Winner Is You is a video game reference. I always just thought it's like a... It's, I don't know. I never thought about it. Today I learned it's a, it's a game reference. And I was like totally shocked and gobsmacked. God damn. It's often, I, I find out... I, I read stuff on the internet and then I just assume, you know, it's just a funny way of saying things and later I learn the origin of something always weirded me out. At least I knew from the beginning that uh, all your bases are belong to us as a reference. But <laughs> a winner is you, I did not know. She then picks up her starfish and hits Sunohara's face as hard as she can. Sunohara is holding his head, rolling around on the floor. Oh, that looks painful. That looks really painful. What are you doing, flaring up at a girl like this? It was just a joke. You're so immature, Sunohara. Look at Fuku. See how calmly she's drinking her juice now? Sunohara 
Forcibly reigning in his temper, Sonohara slams his butt down into the chair. Furukawa is talking to me. Hmm? I still don't think it will appeal to normal people. When I wasn't paying attention, the number of starfish had increased. So, so there is a reason behind the starfish. I assume. Otherwise we wouldn't continue doing them. Or creating them. Huh. Was there something about stars or starfish in um, the, 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 the imaginary world? The, the Oh god, I forgot again what it's called. The illusionary world, there we go. Um, was there something about stars or starfish? Because last time in the Yukine route, um, I was told uh, that there was something about these... Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen the Yukine route. Um, something about these shiny things um, that appeared in the normal world. That there was something about them in the illusionary world. And to be honest, I totally forgot. But by now that I read the stuff about the illusionary world is by now months ago. So I, I, I think to understand the whole thing better I should reread them at some point. Just what could have gone wrong from... Huh? What are you... What's, what are you talking about? Is that right? Yes, just what could have gone wrong for that to happen? Oh, you're talking about the starfish and why she's liking them. Okay. Nope. The thought of keeping a starfish as a pet has never occurred to me. Not to mention, this town doesn't have any beaches. Just how on earth did you come to like them so much? Sounds a bit absurd. It's not something to get entranced about. Try looking at the real thing. Starfish are pretty gross, you know. That is actually true. <laughs> there are grainy bumps all over their bodies. Fuku is looking at me. She seems really surprised. What's wrong? Oh, that makes it more complicated. Stop! Don't try to make them any grosser than they already are. Return it back to your blind spot. They are less painful to the eyes without the bumps. Maybe you would at least recognize that it is starfish instead of stars, I guess. Furukawa, stop her! Something sounds seriously wrong here. I don't quite understand her reasoning, but thanks to that, the starfish won't get any grosser than they already are. Sonohara joins in the conversation. Furukawa points at the line of wooden carvings on the table. Well, to be honest, they also don't like should uh, look like shuriken, to be fair. Like, to be totally fair, they don't. <laughs> they just look like stars. No, they don't. Can this argument get any sillier? I let out a long sigh. Oh, excuse me. Okay, that wasn't really a sigh. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't even know where that came from. I let out a long sigh and sit down again. 
Furukawa says as she looks out the window. In the end, just what have we done today? That is a good question, I'm wondering like 50 minutes now. It feels like we're wasting time a bit. Now don't get me wrong, I think, did I mention it last episode or did I mention it in the comments? But uh, I have nothing against slice of life bits. Actually, I'm all in favor of for, uh, for, for or of them. I'm all in favor of them, I think. Anyway, um, as mentioned, me not English. And um, I like them a lot. But it's just, I don't really get much out of the character of Fuko. It's, it's just uh, this little girlish hee hee ha ha. And uh, together with Nagisa, who is also pretty cliché, just like a basic goody two shoes, you know. Their, their combination is not really interesting. And then with Sunohara we get some stupid uh, Sunohara gets uh, hurt again scenes. It's just it's just not something like in the Kotomi route. Like the Kotomi route was so much slice of life parts and bits. And I loved it to death. Because the combination of all the characters worked so well. I, I also I like um I don't know, but uh, I liked Kyo a lot more in the in the role of uh, the one being serious than uh, Tomoya. Uh, if you're wondering what I mean, for example, when uh, Nagisa and Ryo did something stupid in the Kotomi route, uh, Kyo was like, what are you airheads doing? And it, it felt kind of natural. And here Tomoya is fainting and overreacting and... I don't know, isn't really my kind of humor, you know. Without any other plan, we decide to call it a day. And I spit on my screen, I just realized. Ew. Yeah, when I'm into talking, I even spit on screens. Morning. No one is around today either. The whole family must be gathering in that room to carve again. Ah, oh, goddamn controller. Don't you fall from my me lap. If you're wondering why the controller is on my lap, that is a legit question I have no good answer for. What about the star, old man? If you say so. Yo, Fuko. I sit down next to Fuko. So that's all you're doing today again? As always, she's working on a wooden block with her knife. You know, you should also try handing them out. So far you're really concentrating on the carving. I'm not sure that is true. It's a customer. <laughs> what happened to what you said about flying out right away to greet them? Sanai-san, please say something to him. That sounds kind of wrong, ma'am, but she has a point as well. Does it? Yes, it does. I mean, it's still... Uh, it's still the wrong way of looking at things, but it's still true. Wait a moment, Sanai-san. That wasn't a touching line at all. He's just being selfish. The old man grabs my shirt. But something doesn't look right. The old man drops down on the floor and starts rolling around. Blood is gushing out from the back of his foot. What from his foot? He stretches his hand outward as he says that. The cut is on the back of your foot. Gotta punch him a, him a few times now that he's weakened. Huh, what? He, huh? Punched him? Like really or was that like a metaphor? What? 
She quickly stands up. Um, what are we supposed to do? That is a good question. Oh, almighty walkthrough. As mentioned, we'll stop uh, using the walkthrough uh, after the 30th of April. So we get the Easter egg. And then we'll see if I can get the true ending. Okay, I'm supposed to follow Nagisa. I'll go with you. Please stop with that already. Are we still just strangers to each other? Ooh. No, actually, our hearts are really close to each other. Mm. My heart knows your heart. In and out. Okay, um, I'm out of romantic stuff. Wow. 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 I hope I'll never get an English or American or whatever girlfriend. My girlfriend needs to talk German, otherwise we're doomed. <laughs> because sugar talking is not a strength of mine, apparently, in English. I somewhat forcefully convince her and follow her out, the store, out to the store. Furukawa bows down as she steps out to the store. On the other side of the counter... Yeah, that, that was bound to happen somewhere or the other. It's Ibuki. Fuku's older sister. Uh, what? Panicked, Furukawa and I bump our faces into each other. Ibuki chuckles, looking at us. I also love the voice act of Akio. Like, for, for the ridiculous character he plays, he's like perfect. I gotta say, 10 out of 10. Despite her looks, Sanae Sanshin sure knows what to do when it counts. Yeah, he just stamped, stepped on a thumbtack. It's nothing serious. Yeah, don't worry about it. Somehow the conversation seems to be going at Furukawa's pace. The two ladies really seem to enjoy themselves choosing the bread. Ah, I thought she was trying to uh, sell her Sanai son's bread. But apparently she's a good person and not just trying to get the bread away. Seriously, my heart skipped a beat th th back there. But why did Furukawa and I get so panicked? If Fuku and her sister meet each other here, wouldn't that just solve everything? That's one way to look at it. But Fuku told me it would be cheating to do so. And that it wouldn't work. Is it really such a bad thing to want to make sure she's right? If I do it, would anyone get hurt as the result? I can't seem to make up my mind. For you and... It pains me to ask her that... Have, that it pains me to ask her that... Ah, having already known the answer. To be fair, it could have been her fiancé. Or her parents. Or any other person. You couldn't know. Oh. Right. I have to say something back to her. 
I have to hide the bewilderment that is gripping me and tell her something with a gentle voice. All while pretending to be a stranger to Fuku. Furukawa beats me to it. In a tearful voice. You're getting too emotional. I guess that is not out of character for her though, to be fair. I could see her doing that about a random person. I turn and whisper into Furukawa's ear. Stop talking. It's enough, I'll take care of it. Furukawa standing in silence, her tears are just waiting for a chance to break out. Maybe she's trying too hard, her body is trembling slightly. Come on, try to act natural. Yeah, something wrong, you just cried and talked about my dead sister, something wrong, just asking. She must be fighting against the call of nature. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, that kinda caught me off guard. <laughs> Furukawa shakes her head, and in that instant, her tears start to flow out. Furukawa, give it up! Just pretend to go to the washroom, or washroom and go back to your room. Furukawa wipes her tears as she clumsily makes her retreat. Whoa! Sure hope she doesn't think Furukawa wet herself at that age. She is always such a crybaby. That excuse isn't going to help, but it's better than nothing. Is that all? I'll ring you up. Can you actually do that? Then as I stand in front of the register... Crap! I don't know the prices. Guess I'll just make it an everything at 50 yen special sale day. But even with that, I don't know if I should pay sales tax or not. Ah, Congratulations! Huh? All products are free today. <laughs> totally honest, ma'am. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Man, you could have done a thousand things, Tomoya. And you decided to give it away for free. She can see through me. Are you going to visit your sister now? Hi. That girl, I mean your sister. Is she... really there? Eh? What a stupid question. Ooh, now I'm borderline angry. Now I'm borderline angry. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I mean, obviously, but who in his right mind would ask that in Tomoya's situation? Except for Tomoya. Nobody would ask that. Except for Tomoya, because he's the dumbass. I immediately regret my, regret my question. That you should, my boy. Ju she must be judging my mental condition now. Hey, you have a good memory. Hey, yep, it's Okazaki. At least I made her laugh. Ugh. Now both of the Ibuki sisters have me registered as a weirdo in their heads. Yeah, obviously. Sorry. That's kind of a rude question. Can I call you Ibuki? No, Koko-san. Yeah, of course. Of course. That's normal. She's an adult. You're Tomoya, the douchebag. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Then Koko-san. Please don't give up. If you keep on believing, that day will come. Definitely. Why am I saying this to her? I have no idea. Right. Even after bidding farewell, I keep on watching until her back vanishes from my vision. That's when I realize, whoops. That's when I realize something. I can't find myself disliking this person. That's it. I'm the same as Furukawa. Now that I think about it, if I had enrolled one year earlier, I could have taken her classes. Damn. 
That would be so nice. As she sees me entering the room, Sanae some bows down and apologizes to me. No, it's no problem. I don't see Furukawa and her dad in the room. Fuku is still busily working on her carving. God damn it, controller. Okay, now you're being placed on the desk. There. You happy now? The customer just now. It was Koko Ibuki-san. And now I announce in a clear voice to make sure it reaches a certain someone. Are you too close? She answers me immediately with a smile. I try to imagine how it would turn out if both Sanae-san and Koko-san were in the same place. But can't seem to. Yeah, it's probably too nice and friendly. <laughs> too nice and friendly for Tomoya's imagination. As the sun sets, the Furukawa family becomes busy with closing the store in preparation for dinner. Sure. Furukawa stands up and leaves the room. Only Fuku and I are left. And even that Fuku is totally... And even that Fuku is totally focused on her task. And even that Fuku is totally... Does that make sense? Or am I stupid? Just what should I do? There is no one to talk to. The sounds come to a halt. I turn my head to look at Fuku. She's gently stroking the newly made starfish. You finished another one? Even if you put it next to another one for me to compare, they all look the same to me. It would look way better without the arms though. Even if let circle is about 100 times better than starfish. That is a fair question. The opposite is pretty questionable too, don't you think? And you are being extremely rude to the circle. So are you going to pick up a starfish on the ground? Good night. I turn to face the wall and lie down. Our values are too vastly different. It's pointless to talk. You know, I often feel like that uh, in political discussions. <laughs> Why are there so many people around me who have tastes for such unusual things? The first step would be to let them decide which is cuter. Big Dango family or starfish. You know, that would result in uh, an explosion of the universe. It would go on like this. Probably not, I, I can't see. Last time they fought, they just decided they're both cute and together they would be cuter. I can't really see them argue. The Starfish Song. Give me a second. The Starfish Song is a spoof of the song Grateful Days by Dragon Ash. In the original piece, the line goes, I was born in Tokyo and grew up with hip-hop. Anyone who looks bad as ish is probably my friend. That sounds stupid, <laughs> but it's a spoof song. Close but no cigar. One, zero for dangos. No, you don't say zero, do you? One nil for dangos. But damn it, why am I using hip hop shit? It's no different from Sunohara. Hey, don't be bad, at least Klanat invented uh, dubstep. So, we agreed on that in the comments, so it's official canon now. Guess I'll just sleep here until dinner. And uh, no, wait. I give it another thought. Isn't this very moment one of the rare chances to talk with Fuko? Ever since she came to this house, all she's been doing is carving. Seriously. I half Asli get up and turn to Fuko. But she's already gone to that other world. Jeez, you hopeless case. 
just when I've decided to talk to you. I guess it's just a waste of time to trying to talk to her now. Well, obviously it's a time for prank. Since I'm not at school, I have to find a different approach. Feed her Sanae's bread. Switch the carving she's holding. Eto uno momento. The walkthrough has spoken. Switch the carving. I forcibly pull the wooden star she's embracing dearly from her hands. Then I take one of the slippers from the corridor and put it where the star used to be. All I'll have to do now is wait. So you finally returned your senses. I've been waiting. Yeah, as if we had didn't do this already like a million times, but you were spacing out. Yes. In your case, the prey may be the one to get fat. Well, if you say so. Anyway, I've come to understand how much you love that thing. Yep, it's a treasured item. A must-have in every family. Totally. So, why don't you try to kissing it? Well, I thought you loved it. Yeah, I swear. Those starfish will divorce you. It's already a shame how all you ever kissed were starfish. Hey, Tomoya, to be fair, you're not in the position to say that. Just so you know, I said no such thing. Yay! A Fuku user? What? Yay! Long live RPGs. I'll pass. After finishing dinner later that day, I decide to take my retreat. Uh, I'm already feeling exhausted just by the thought of them bringing up that stupid quarrel again today. Nah, we're good. We're just going in the wrong direction. I have solid confidence in my common sense not being too twisted compared to normal people, but... With these special cases around, even that confidence is waning. Or maybe I've been delusional about my normality. Probably, yeah, that is probably the point. Actually, that is 100% the point. I'm just saying, Tomoya. I'm just saying, from man to man. You not normal. You not normal. If that is the case, I can't deny the possibility of that gross starfish becoming super popular with young girls. I don't know, it's probably... It's probably, first of all, it's too big. And it's too... How should I say? It should be, like, colored in a different way, like just plain brown, probably doesn't sell. Or, okay, you don't sell it, but... You know what I mean? Uh... Yeah, overall, I don't think... I don't think the starfish thing is a bad idea. But it should be executed differently. Is it possible that an unprecedented... Unprecedented starfish boom will come into existence starting from this town? Please, not this town. As soon as first period is over, we quickly gather at the usual place. For now, let's try giving that starfish to someone. That is a good idea. If they like it, we'll go with starfish. Hi. With a firm nod, Fuko holds out a starfish in both hands to Furukawa. Uh, 
喜んでくれたな人手で決定ですか Wait, wait. You two are just acting. グルじゃないです。本当に嬉しかったです。それに、フーちゃんが私なんかにくれるなんて思わなくて、すごく驚いて、だから、人手じゃなくても嬉しかったと思います。Well, you know, I don't think your honest feelings are related to our topic at hand. どうでもいいことないです。嬉しかったんです。Yeah, okay. I got it. My head is starting to ache. This is becoming more and more like what happened yesterday. Anyway, we're going to try again. This time with a stranger. Let's go somewhere else then. The corridor on the first floor of the new building. The corridor on the third floor of the new building. Reference room. I wonder if this is actually important or if it's just about meeting different people. You know what? I'll make a save here. And if you know, let me know in the comments, please. If these are just different scenes with different people. Because if it, if it is like that, we can go back and, you know, do that again and see the different reactions. Because that could be fun. Let's go to the reference room. By the way, that is what the walkthrough says. No idea. Uh, the reference room was Yukine's room, right? Or am I wrong? I think I'm right. We go down the stairs toward the most inner part of the floor. There is the reference room. Well, it's pretty plain. Let's go in. We open the door and enter the room. There's a female student inside. That would be kind of interesting. Of course, the scene would be different、um, if we already have met Yokini. You know, one thing you've got to appreciate is you can do、uh, many things in many different ways in Klanat. For example, as mentioned before, we could be, we could be on the Fuku route、uh, and already be a couple with Nagisa, or we could already know some people. I guess we could. Also, no Yukine, or would that destroy the Fuku route? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. So, you know, it's, it's interesting, and actually, that is a lot of work, I assume. Is this some kind of store? Well, whatever. At least there's someone here. Your turn, Fuku. I push Fuku's shoulder. With the starfish in hand, Fuku walks closer to the female student. Fuku turns around and strikes a victory pose. Ah, maybe I have chosen the wrong target. Why did I pick the girl with an impossibly big tolerance to just about anything? With that said, she starts making coffee for us. And the leisurely coffee hour commences. Actually, you know, I like the background music in、uh, Yukine's room. Replied to her properly. She sees us off with a smile. Hey, Fuku, pull yourself together. I knock her on the hat. Okay, she's back. Nagomi 
喜んでもらえたので人手で決定です。Are you serious? Ah, fine, whatever. Just don't tell anyone they're starfish, okay? The girl just now was a special case. She has inhuman tolerance to just about anything. I mean, I at least assume so. I don't really know. I imagine Fuku walking up to a student and whispering that in their ear. It's no different from a bad prank. They are going to scream. Yeah, maybe in your dreams. <laughs> okay, that actually sounded creepy. <laughs> that could be a horror game moment. I admit I would like to see all the students fall over at the same time. Where on earth could you find such a school? More than that. So we're going with starfish after all? Well, apparently we do so, but we'll do so next episode. And I think I'll try out what happens if we, um... If uh, we choose something different. So gotta remember, save file 17 next episode. But I'll probably forget it. I tend to forget things. For example, I also forgot the um, the storage scene with Akio. What I wanted to do in the beginning of the round. Now I have to do it in the beginning of the next round. Let's see if I remember this time. Hopefully. God damn, I'm so stupid. Well, I guess it's not stupid. I'm just not really collected, you know. It's a bad habit. I'm 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 always so much all over the place. Anyway. Thank you everybody for watching, come back for the next episode, and I'll see you then, bye bye!